Hello, today we're continuing in our GCSE physics revision series looking at transformers. A transformer is used to change a voltage or a potential difference and you can go either what's called step up which means you can increase the voltage or step down which means you can decrease the voltage. And the way it usually works is this, you get basically an iron frame where this is essentially the iron and you have a coil of wire around this arm which is called the primary. So here I'm going to put say some coils around the primary and this end which is called the secondary I also put some coils around that but not the same number, a different number of coils. And then what I have is a voltage here, which is called the voltage of the primary. The key thing about this is it must be an alternating current voltage, AC. DC won't work for reasons I'll explain in a moment. And you get out of this side the voltage of the secondary, and that's what you want. Either stepped up or stepped down, depending on whatever, whatever you need. Now the way it works is this, that the current flowing in this coil is an alternating current. That alternating current will therefore have a changing magnetic field. That magnetic field, because it's um, now in the presence of this iron core, that magnetic field gets transferred through the magnetic uh, core. So the magnetic field caused by the current that's flowing in this wire, which is the current in the primary, causes a changing magnetic field because the current is changing. That's why it doesn't work if you have DC, because if you have DC you have nothing changing and you only get an induced current when things are changing. So direct current won't work. Alternating current, changing current equals changing field. That changing field is transmitted through the iron so now you've got just an ordinary cable which is in the presence of a changing magnetic field. And we know that from that you'll get an induced current, which we will call IS, that is the current in the secondary. Now let's suppose the number of turns, the number of coils in the primary is NP and the number of coils or turns in the secondary is Ns, then I can tell you that the voltage in the primary divided by the voltage in the secondary is equal to the number of turns in the primary divided by the number of turns in the secondary. It's really as simple as that. So here's an exam question. Let's suppose that the number of turns in the primary is 80, that the number of turns in the secondary is 1600, so quite a lot more, that the voltage of the primary is 500 volts and remember it has to be AC otherwise it's not going to work and the question is what is the voltage in the secondary, in other words what is the output voltage that this transformer is going to deliver. Well, we'll take this formula here and you need to be able to manipulate formulae like this. You need to be able to flip them round. And if you flip this round, you'll find that Vs, which is what we want, is equal to Vp times Ns over Np. This is a kind of mathematical skill you'll need um, in algebra, really. You need to be able to take a formula like this and be able to rearrange the equation for the, for, the, for the actual value you're trying to find. So Vs is Vp times Ns over Np, and we know all of those. Uh, Vp is 500 volts. Ns is 1600 turns. And Np is 80. So Vs, the voltage in the secondary, well, 80s go into 1,620 times, 20 times 500 is 10,000. So you'll see that we get an amazing 10,000 volts out of our transformer. 
for which the input voltage was 500 volts. So that's clearly a step up transformer. We got a greater voltage out than the voltage we put in. Here's another exam question. Suppose the number of turns in the primary is 80, which is what it was before, but the number of turns in the secondary is now only 40. And the input voltage as before was 500 volts and it has to be AC. What now is the secondary output, the voltage output? That is, what is this transformer actually going to deliver for you? Well, once again, you need to take the basic formula we've already got, VP over VS equals NP over NS, rearrange it again for VS. So as before, that's going to be VP times NS over NP, exactly what we had before. But now that's going to be VP, which is 500, times NS, the number of turns in the secondary, which is 40, divided by the number of turns in the primary, which was 80. And now you've got that that is going to be, well, 40 over 80 is a half, half of 500 is 250 volts. So now you started with a voltage of 500 volts and your output voltage is 250 volts. So that's a step down transformer. And if you look, you should be able to see what happens. In order to go from 500 volts to 10,000 volts, you needed more turns in the secondary than you had in the primary. In fact, you need the same proportion. Here you're going up by a factor of 20. And so the turns also need to go up by a factor of 20. Here, you're going down from 500 volts to 250 volts. And so you need fewer turns in the secondary. And indeed, if you're going down by a half, the number of turns goes down by a half. So whatever proportion you need to increase your voltage, that's the proportion you need to increase the number of turns. Whatever proportion you need to decrease your voltage, that's the proportion you need to decrease the number of turns. And I remind you once more, it only works with alternating current because with alternating current, you get a varying magnetic field, which is proportional to the current. So if the current's changing, the magnetic field is changing and you only get induced currents where you've got changing magnetic fields. There are some transformers where the number of turns on the primary equals the number of turns on the secondary. And you would quickly look, if you look at the formula we've just derived, you would find that the voltage of the secondary therefore equals the voltage of the primary. So the voltage you put in is the voltage you get out. And you might think, what's the point of that? That is called an isolating transformer. And its purpose is that sometimes when you put a voltage in, maybe that voltage is not a very reliable voltage. Maybe there are spikes in it, uh, where every so often you get a jump in the voltage. And that could cause great damage to something like a computer. Whereas if you put it through an isolating transformer, you get the same voltage out, but now that voltage is much, much less susceptible to a sudden surge um, in the voltage in the primary uh, that will be smoothed out in the secondary. Now, transformers are pretty efficient. They're not 100% efficient because they can get hot. And that means that some of the power, some of the heat, some of the energy is being lost. But by and large, the power in equals the power out. So let me redraw my transformer with the number of turns on the primary and the number of turns on the secondary. And there was a voltage in the primary and there was a current in the primary and there's a voltage in the secondary and a current in the secondary. And if you remember to an earlier video in this series on electricity where we covered power, we showed that power in an electric circuit is equal to the voltage times the current. So the power of the primary is equal to VP times IP, the voltage of the primary times the current of the primary. And what I'm saying to you is that because it's pretty efficient, 
you can regard for these purposes that that will also be the power of the secondary. So Vs equals, sorry, and the power of the secondary is Vs times Is. So Vpip equals Vs Is. The power of the input is equal to the power of the output. So suppose I need a transformer adapter to run some equipment that I've got, and I want that adapter to take an input voltage, or the primary voltage, is going to be 110 volts AC, and I want the output voltage to be 230 volts AC. And I also want a current coming from the secondary for the equipment that I want to use of 5 amps. The question is, what is the current flowing through the primary? So we just go back to this formula here, and we need to rearrange that for the purposes of finding the primary current. So IP will equal VSIS divided by VP. And that's going to be Vs, which is 230 volts, times the current in the secondary, which is 5, divided by the voltage in the primary, which is 110. And that, very roughly, is going to be equal to 10.5 amps. So you can see that the current in the primary is higher than the current in the secondary, but the voltage in the primary is smaller than the voltage in the secondary. Now, if you're not careful, you can get very high currents in the secondary. Let me just give you an example. Suppose the voltage in the primary is 200 volts. Maybe it's kind of, let's say that's a UK um, mains voltage. It's actually 230, but we'll round it to make it easy to do the calculations. Call it uh, 200 volts. And the output voltage, the secondary, I need 20 volts coming out. And I can tell you that the current in the primary is 2 amps. What will be the current in the secondary. Well, once again, we're going to use this formula here, VPIP equals VSIS. So I now need to rearrange that for IS, and IS is going to be VPIP divided by VS. As I've said, you need to learn how to manipulate these equations so that you can find the term you actually want in terms of all the others. And that's going to be equal to well, VP is 200, IP is 2, and VS is 20. And that's going to come to 20 amps. And that's a lot. So you had 2 amps in the primary, you're going to get 20 amps coming out of the secondary. That could make things very hot indeed. Of course, you use transformers all the time. You use them to charge your computer, your mobile phone. What happens is in the UK, the voltage at the wall is 230 volts, and you want to charge your mobile phone. Well, your mobile phone certainly does not want 230 volts placed across it. That will kill it. So you have to have a transformer. So you plug the transformer into the wall, and then the other end of the transformer you plug into the mobile phone. So 230 volts is the primary voltage, but the secondary voltage is probably something of the order of 12 volts, depends what the um, mobile phone requires. In other words, this is a step down transformer. It's going from 230 down to 12 volts. Most of the transformers that you use for these purposes are called switch mode transformers. You'll notice that they're very light and generally very small, so they're easy to handle. And they have another virtue, and that is that many people, when they finish charging the phone, they disconnect the phone, but they don't switch it off at the wall. And the advantage of these transformers is that once you remove the secondary, you get very little power, very little current flowing, so you use up no power of any substance. And that's good, because you don't want to waste power. 
So if you do just take your phone away but inadvertently leave the transformer plugged in, it doesn't use much power. But of course, good practice tells you that it's always a good idea to disconnect the transformer from the wall. So here now is the exam question on transformers. The voltage in the primary is 240 volts. So in, in other words, it's the mains voltage in the UK. And of course, I remind you, it's alternating current. The voltage that I want coming out is 12 volts because I want to charge my, mo my, my mobile phone. And I need a current from the secondary and output current of just 0.5 amps. And I can tell you that there are 60 turns on the primary. The first part of the question is, what is the current flowing through the primary? So now I need the fact that the input power, V times I, is equal to the output power, Vs times Is. I need to manipulate that equation to get what I want. So Ip is Vs Is divided by Vp, which is Vs is 12, Is is 0 0.5, Vp is 240, and that's going to be equal to 0 0.025 amps. Oh gosh, 0.025 amps, which can also be written as 25 milliamps, where a milli is, of course, rather like a millimeter, a thousandth of a meter, a milliamp is a thousandth of an amp. Question two, what is the power input? Well, since the power input equals the power output, I could do it either way, but the power input, of course, is just going to be VPIP because that's the power of the primary, and that's going to equal Vp, which is 240 volts, times Ip, which I just calculated is 0 0.025 amps. So that's 240 times 0 0.025, and that equals, power is in watts, of course, that comes to six watts. Let's just check because the power input should equal the power output. So that will be VSIS, the voltage and the current of the secondary. The voltage of the secondary, we said, was 12 volts, and the current in the secondary is 0 0.5 amps. So that's 12 times 0 0.5, and that's 6 watts. So it works both ways. And the final part of the question is, what is the number of turns in the secondary. We were told that the number of turns in the primary was 60. So the equation we're going to need here is that the voltage in the primary divided by the voltage in the secondary is equal to the number of turns in the primary divided by the number of turns in the secondary. We need to manipulate that equation to get what we want, which is Ns. So Ns is going to be Np times Vs over Vp. The number of turns in the primary, let me just show you what that was again, it was 60. The relative voltages are Vs is 12, Vp is 240. So remembering that, we've got that Np is 60, Vs was 12, Vp was 240. And that's going to be 60 times 12 is 720 divided by 240. That is going to be three turns. So there were 60 turns in the primary, but only three turns in the secondary. And that makes sense because if you look, you're actually stepping down the voltage by a factor of 20 from 240 to 12. And consequently, you have to step down the number of turns by 20. So if you have 60 turns in the primary, step that down by a factor of 20. 60 divided by 20 is three turns.